Hello designers and welcome back to another Affinity Designer tutorial. Today I will show you how to create an isometric cylinder and then change it into something that looks like a can or a tin. So we'll go from something that looks like this that will end up looking like this so that we can create something that looks like this. Let's jump right in. Okay, first things first, when I click on any shortcuts, I'll show you what's done because it will appear in the bottom left hand corner or somewhere in the center there. So first I want to show you my document setup in case you're following along with me. This bit doesn't really matter too much, but my dimensions are 1280 by 720 and 72 DPI because it's just going to remain online. I'm not going to print it or anything. Color is RGB and going to press OK. So important thing, snapping, turn that on. And I'll just click on the drop down menu so you can see what I have ticked and what I have not ticked. Next important thing, head up to view, studio, and isometric. Click on that. My isometric panel has appeared here because on my last project, I dragged it over to here. Your isometric panel may appear somewhere in the tabs up here or one of the tabs, however you've got it set up. So just look for it around there. It's called isometric. Okay, we're gonna to want to set the grid up. So grid settings down here, click on that. And I've just chosen a preset, which is 64 by 32 pixel isometric with planes. Once that's selected, go ahead and press close. Okay, we're going to want to see our grid now. So let's click on command and single quotation mark. You can see it here, and this will bring the grid up so that we can see it. Head on up to current plane. You can see top is selected. Here are the other settings. We're going to select top and select edit in plane. Next, select ellipse tool. And head somewhere to the bottom of your document, maybe somewhere like that. And hover around the center. You can see there's dark gray lines and light gray lines. We're going to concentrate on the dark gray lines. So Click and drag out from the center there whilst holding command and shift and drag it out until it snaps to those dark gray lines. Let go. We have our first layer over here. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is click on the rectangle tool and we're just going to deactivate edit in plane. Zoom in and go to the edge of the circle. And you can see it's kind of snapping around the edge here. So we're going to click and drag outwards. And I'm just going to make it slightly darker here in the colors panel, slightly darker. And we're going to zoom out and drag that right across until it snaps to the other side. There we go, it is snapped into place. You can see the yellow line. It snapped to the shape underneath. Let go. Let's zoom out a bit and we'll drag the node from the top upwards till it gets to about one, two, three and a bit. So maybe somewhere around here. Okay, so we have two shapes and just click on edit in plane again. And we will press on V, which is shortcut for our move tool. And I'll select the bottom layer here, the circle, and I'll just press Command and J, and that's to duplicate that shape. And I want to click that one and drag it up to the top on the Layers panel. And I'm going to click and drag up whilst holding down Shift to keep it in a straight line. You can see the orange yellowy line there, keeping it in a straight line. And I'll just zoom in to make sure it's lined up properly. I'll just drag it up a little bit more. And around about here, that looks good to me. Okay, so you can see the uh, can, the tin forming. Next thing we're going to want to do is grab this shape and grab the shape underneath. So hold down shift and click on that one. And now they're both selected, you can see in the layers panel. And we're gonna head up to the geometry tools and we're gonna click add and click it now. And you can see that has added two shapes into one. I'll just make that slightly darker. You can see our can is forming here. So I'll just deactivate the grid, command single quotation mark. To make this cylindrical shape look a little bit more like a can, let's make it look a little bit more metallic by selecting the fill tool um, 
and click and drag out which is going to give us our gradient so right now it's on linear up here we're going to start selecting the colors we want so on this one i'll make it slightly lighter you see if you hover around the line you see the plus shape we'll add that one and we'll make it much lighter and i'll just click here and i'll click again and i'll make this a little bit lighter too and I'll just drag this out a little bit like that. I'll make this slightly darker in the middle. And I'll drag that out to the side a bit more. Oh, I'll keep it over here. Okay, so we have our can shape. And we have the metallic look going on here. Just make that slightly lighter. There we go. So the next thing we want to do is concentrate on the top section here. So Press V for the move tool and we'll select the top. I'm just going to call this top to keep it tidy in the layers panel and press return. Next, we want to duplicate the top layer. So I'm going to press command J to make a duplicate. You can see in the layers panel, it's being created. I'm going to click on the side here and hold down command and shift and drag inwards around about here to give, you'll see why, to give some thickness to it. This I will make slightly darker, maybe somewhere around here. And the last thing I want to do is duplicate this. Another way to duplicate, it's an old fashioned way of doing it, would be to press Command C to copy and Command V to paste. You can see we have another layer here. On this one, I will make it much lighter. I'm just going to drag that down and make it kind of light, somewhere like that. and. I'm going to rename all of these. So this layer we've just made here is going to be called top surface. And you'll see why now. So top surface is selected. I'm going to click and drag down. Let's zoom in a little bit. So I've clicked and dragged down like so, maybe about that much. And I'm going to want to drag it into this shape here because we're going to clip it inside because you can see the outer edge of this is coming over the can so click and drag down and to the right and now it will clip into this shape the darker shape here we'll call this one rim press return okay let's have a look what we've got so far Okay, usually cans or tins of soup and beans, they have these kind of rings on top here. So let's go ahead and create those. So we'll click on top surface, which is our, our child layer, and we will press Command J. And that's duplicated that. And just to start off, we're gonna call it ring, press enter. Now let's make it slightly smaller maybe around about here. What we're going to do is we're going to head up to fill and we're going to make sure that's not activated. So we're going to click here on the white circle with the red, arrow, red line through it. Next, we're going to click on stroke and we're going to drag this up so it's a kind of dark color here. And we're just going to play with the thickness. So we're going to click on this line here and this is where you can drag this up and down to just get the right thickness that you want. I have scale with object turned on. You'll see why in a minute. And I'll just make sure my pressure, there's no pressure on it. Or just press reset if there is anything, if you've played around with it before. Okay. So now I'll just click anywhere just to get rid of that. We're going to duplicate this. We're going to power duplicate it. So press command J to duplicate it. And we're going to press command J again and it's duplicated it. Now this, the, why did that happen? Because it's duplicated an action we did previously. So let's say you started off with this shape instead of started off with the top surface. Let's say you started off with this one. From here, you would press Command J to duplicate, and then you would grab the layer it duplicated, and then you would resize it. And then the next time you press Command J, it would then create that action again. So anyway, we have our three rings now. 
So what I want you to do is select all of them and we want to, we don't want these to be strokes anymore. We want to expand them to be uh, curves. So head up to layer and expand stroke. If you click on it, look in the layers panel and you'll see, I'll click and now they're all called curves. So that means that we can add things inside of it and it just makes uh, life a little bit easier. You'll see why now. Okay, so we have all three shapes. We want to make them one shape. So head up to geometry and click on add. Now you can see that it's just one layer now. And the reason we did that is because I want to add a gradient in here and I want that gradient to be reflected across all three of these circles or rings, I should say. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on the fill tool and we're going to click and drag outwards like that. So this side, we're going to keep it kind of dark, maybe not that dark, somewhere like that. And in the middle, if you hover over the line, you can see a plus symbol. That means you can add another point. So we're going to add a point here. I'm going to make this lighter in the colors tab. So I'll make it somewhere like that. Okay, now I will head over to the other side and I will maybe I'll make it something like that. Okay, so next we're going to want to add a gradient to the top surface that's underneath of these rings. So now that it's selected, I'll click and drag across. And I want this side to be the darker side. So I'll just drag the color up around about here. And I want this to be the lighter side. And maybe make that slightly darker. Okay, press V, the move tool, so we can see what we've created. See if it's looking any good. Yeah, I like that. But I think we need to add a bit more of a gradient to the top here. Because it's all just one color. So I'll just click on it and we'll add a gradient to this as well. So fill tool again, click and drag across. And we'll make this side, we'll make this slide slightly darker and this side much lighter. And we have this rim here as well. So I'll just click on the rim while still having the fill tool activated. And I'll do the same again. I'll just click and drag out so I'll make this side the dark side and this the light side. Okay, I'll make that slightly darker here. And I'll just add one more in there and another one. Okay, I think that just about does it. I'll add one more. Okay, press V, the move tool, and we'll zoom out to see what we've got. Okay, usually on cans or tins of soup or baked beans, usually there's like a little lip that comes over here. It's not just straight up like this. So that's what we're going to do next. So what we're going to do, we have our rim here. We're just going to make tidy the layers panel up a little bit. So we have top layer and rim. So the top layer is the outermost layer. Uh, so we can clip the rim inside of the top. So just click and drag down and to the right. And now that is just one shape, which is going to be much easier for what we're going to do uh, next. Let's create that rim. Select the bottom layer here and press Command J. And that's to duplicate it. We'll hide the bottom one by unchecking this. We'll make it invisible. Okay, with this one, keep your finger on shift and drag up. We'll drag it up to round about here, I think. And you're going to want to click A for the node tool. The node tool is up here, by the way. And we're going to select the top two nodes and we're going to click and drag down whilst holding shift to keep it in a straight line. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. They're still both selected. I'm going to click and drag down and up a little bit more. There we go. 
that snapped into place. And there we go, we have our top. So I'll just select both of them and I'll press Command G to group them. And now that they're grouped, I'll call it top. Okay, let's make the bottom layer visible. So there's no changes just yet. Press V, the move tool. What we want to do is make this slightly bigger. So I'm going to click and drag out whilst holding shift and command. And you can see it's coming out slightly here. So the next thing we want to do to create some difference between the top and the bottom is to create some kind of shadow here. So what I'm going to do to create the shadow is I'm just going to duplicate this top layer here. So command J again, that's du duplicated it. So on the duplicate layer, click the drop down menu and grab drop and drag it out onto the top here. And we can delete this layer here, the rest of it. Now that we've got top, just open it up again and we'll delete everything inside so that we have our basic layer here. Next, we're gonna make this darker and we're gonna drag it down underneath the top. And we're just gonna drag down whilst holding shift until it pokes out from underneath that, um, that top there. And that's a little bit thick. So I'm, this is gonna be our shadow, remember? So I'm just gonna use the arrow key just to get it up to where I want it to be. Okay, you can see here it's going over the line of our main can, our tin. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make it slightly smaller. And then I'm going to clip this inside of our main can shape. So I'll drag down and to the right again. It's clipped inside. If we have a look now, now it's not going over. That's great. So that bit's done. Excellent. Let's call this, um, let's call this can. Okay, we have our top section. Now we need the bottom section. This is relatively easy to do. So it's all about the duplicate. So we're gonna press Command and J and that's duplicated it. And we're gonna drag it to the bottom and we're just gonna name it bottom. Press return. All right, let's click and drag down whilst holding shift. You can see it poking out on each side and drag it down to where you think. I'm just gonna eyeball it. So I think around about here looks good. Okay, so up until this point, we've made a cylindrical object and then we've turned it into something that looks like a tin of beans or a tin of soup. So I'm just gonna change some of the colors until I'm happy with how it looks. So I'll probably fast forward this little bit. So we have a bear can, but what about adding a paper sleeve to it? Something where the marketing would usually go. Um, how would we get that? Uh, so it looks like it's, it's uh, going around this um, cylindrical object. Well, click on can and top and duplicate these. And just make sure both layers that you've duplicated are on top. And just click and drag them to the side. Okay, so in top, just click and drag that and drag the top layer here, which is the one that's selected. Just drag it on top and delete anything that's underneath. Okay, so the next thing, open up top and delete rim. And so we're just left with this basic shape here. I'll just make it completely like that color. Next thing, we're gonna to head to our can shape and we're gonna delete the shadow that we added earlier. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select top and can. We're gonna select both of them and we're gonna go up to geometry and press subtract. So that's subtracted that out of it. So this is the start of our sleeve. 
I'll just make it some kind of red color for now. And I will drag it across whilst holding shift so it still snaps into place. So that's snapped into place now. You can see it's a little bit too big. So we're going to click on A for our node tool. We're going to select all of the nodes on top. And we're going to click one of them, hold down shift and drag downwards like that. And we're just going to have it so a little bit's peeking out, a bit of the metal's peeking out underneath the shadow. And same for the bottom, select all of the nodes and hold down shift and drag up a little bit. We've got around about the same amount underneath there. And let's add a little gradient to this as well. So click and drag that out. I'll select this side first, the dark side. And I'll make something somewhere around here. And this side will be light. Let's give it a little bit less saturation there. And right here, this is where I want it to be kind of light. So that the light is catching it slightly. Somewhere like that. Okay, clicking on the move tool to see what we've created. That's it. So this would be where the marketing would go. I won't name any brands, but uh, we have our can or tin of beans, tin of soup, and we have a removable uh, paper sleeve. Okay, let's group all of these. Command G to group and call it tin can. Press return. Now that we've created our tin can, let's make a soda can. So I'm just going to duplicate this and I'm going to hide one of them and just drag it off over here somewhere. I'll rename this soda can and I'll start deleting a few things. So head in the layers panel and we'll keep the sleeve. So I'll just hide that for now. I will delete top. I'll delete the shadow inside the can that we made and I'll delete the bottom. So we're left with this basic shape again. I'll just turn on the grid and I will reposition it and resize it slightly. Maybe a bit more. Okay, so now I'm just going to drag it down a little bit actually. Okay, now I'm going to grab the ellipse tool, edit in plane is on and top. I'm just going to go into the center of this. I'm going to drag out a circle. Okay, so we have a basic circle again. I'll just change the color to something kind of basic like that. And I'll turn off the grid at this point. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. So Command J. I'm going to hit the V, the move tool. And before I do that, I'm just going to change the color. I'm going to drag it up slightly like that. And I'm going to make it smaller. So this is like the, the edge before the top on soda cans. It kind of goes in uh, before the rim here. Uh, maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. No, that was fine. Okay. So something like that, but first let's put a gradient on here. So I'll grab the fill tool and I'll just drag out anywhere like that for now. And I'll head up to type and I'll click on conical and this strange shape appears here. So I'll just drag I'll just click off of edit in plane actually and I'll just drag it around like that and I'll just drag it up to the top and you'll see why now so I'll click on the first I'll click on here to create a light kind of shade and click here to add a slightly darker one just I can move them around like that so you can add as many as you want here I'm just gonna add a few Give it that metallic look. Okay, I'll leave it like that for now, but you can see uh, you can see what's happening here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do 
is hit the move tool and we're going to create a circle and we're just going to draw it out here just going to get rid of that color there okay so this is going to be the top of the can uh, with the ring pull and all the little channel around the outside so let's get started on that so first off let's make the ring pull i'm going to use the trapezoid tool so if you click on this and you can see you have all these options the trapezoid tool is here click on that and just drag out holding down shift and command and somewhere like that give it a darker color and we'll just drag these in slightly if i hold down command both edges will react to when i pull it in or out so somewhere like that i think Okay, hit the corner tool and select all nodes and just drag in something around about here. And I'll click on bake corners, click on the move tool. And now we need to do a few cutouts. So just to make it simple, I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. I'm going to drag out something that kind of resembles an egg shape. I'll just change the color so you can see it slightly better. Press V, the move tool, move it up slightly. And let's, uh, so something like that. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just duplicate that shape. I'm just gonna drag it down. And I'm gonna make it more of a circular shape like so. I'm just gonna duplicate this one more time. So I'm just gonna hold down command, click and drag out. And I'm going to make this slightly darker and resize it. Just stick this somewhere like that. Kind of like the design of the ring pull. So first off, let's do some cutting out. So I want to cut this shape out of this shape. So I'm going to select both of them. Head up to the geometry tools and click on subtract. Okay, now that's been cut out. Now let's cut both this shape and this shape out of the ring. So in the layers panel, Got both of them selected and then the ring shape. I'm going to head up to geometry again and click on subtract. So we have our basic ring pull now. Now let's create some shapes that usually go around here. So you'd open the can and it would open up this kind of trap door kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to hit on the trapezoid tool again and I'm just going to draw something out. Yeah, I'm just going to draw something out like that. I'm going to flip it with the transform tool, flip it upside down, press on the V, the move tool, and I'm just going to move it somewhere like that. And I'm going to grab the corner tool again and change this side of it. So somewhere like this. I'm going to bake the corners. I'm going to get rid of the fill because I just want a stroke on this one. So there's the fill, get rid of that. Stroke. Something like that. And let's increase the thickness slightly of the stroke. Yeah, something like that. And lastly, let's create some kind of shape that goes around here. Just to speed things up, I'm just going to copy our shape here. Command J to duplicate that. Just going to make it white. Just drag it out a little bit. I'm going to click A, the node tool. I'm just going to delete some of these nodes in here. Okay, we have our shape. I'm going to drag it underneath the ring pull. I'm going to increase the size. And I'm going to drag it down slightly like that. And we're going to make this a stroke as well. So again, click on the fill tool, get rid of that fill. Click on the stroke and we'll choose the same color. Just to choose the same color, I'm just going to drag the eyedropper tool onto our previous stroke. And we're going to increase the thickness again. I'll just eyeball it for now. Somewhere like that. Okay, so we've got both of our shapes here. So before I do the next step, I'm going to select both of them. And I'm going to go up to layer. And I'm going to expand stroke. So both expanded now. 
just going to drag the ring pull on the top layer. Okay, so before I head on to the next step, I'm just going to grab the fill tool and draw out some kind of gradient here. And again, I'm going to use the conical tool. So drag that to the middle, just zoom out a bit and resize. From here, I'll just add just add a few points and play around so it looks a little bit more metallic. I'll leave it at that for now. Okay, so let's grab all of our shapes that we've created and we'll clip them inside of our top shape, our circular shape. That will be the top of our can, the top surface. And before I go any further, I'm just going to check that I have baked the corners just in case it skews it slightly when I um, click on fit to plane, which is coming up. Yeah, everything's looking good here. OK, so I'm just going to drag this around. So it faces that way. And I might reposition that to the center slightly like Something like that maybe and I can I can see now that this is not quite centered the gradient here so I'm just going to click on that and try and get it a little bit more centered maybe hide it behind yeah somewhere like that for now okay let's activate the grid and we will click on top and fit to plane Let's bring it over and let's nest it inside of this shape that we created earlier for the top of the can. It's looking a bit big there, so let's resize that. I'm holding down shift and command at the same time to keep the proportions. Now let's just try and center that. We'll eyeball it. I'll just get rid of that and there we go, it's centered. And let's create a bit more depth here. I think a little bit smaller. Somewhere like that. Okay, before I do anything else, I'm just going to add a gradient to this as well using the fill tool. I just grab that, make it kind of dark on this side. Chuck in a, a light reflection over here. Keep that. Make that a little bit darker here. And something like that. Okay, we should probably name a few of these layers uh, just to avoid any confusion. I'll just click on my V, the move tool, so I can see which is selected. Okay, this is the top here, so I'm just gonna call this um, just gonna call this top for now. And this bit here, I will just call this. This is now the new rim. Okay, and everything is the child layers are nested in here. And I can call this top surface so I don't get confused. Okay, let's try and make this a little bit more three dimensional. So let's start off with the ring pull. Let's duplicate that, Command J, and we'll just drag up holding the Shift button. And let's give this a bit of a lighter color, something like that. And to give it a bit more of a 3D look to it, I'm going to click on the FX button down here, layer effects. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click on 3D. I'll just reposition that so you can see what's going on here. That looks a bit full on, doesn't it? So let's just have a look at what we've got. I think I will make it, give it one of these profiles and I'll just click on this and soften to soften that up a little bit and radius I'll have somewhere like that okay let's play around with a few of these specular somewhere like that let's click on diffuse so we'll play on this until I'm happy okay that will do for now I'll just close that 
and I'll click on the bottom layer and I'll just grab the eyedropper tool and I'll select the area of shadow here. Let's click on that. Yeah, something like this. Okay, we'll leave that for now. Um, just going back though, just so you know, the direction, this is the direction of your light source. So it will change based on based on that. So if I have it around about here, uh, that should suffice. Okay, next up, let's use these little channels here. Uh, I'll select both of them. And I'll click on the layer effects tab and we'll go to bevel emboss. I'll just move that slightly so we can see what's happening. So it's on pillow right now. Um, let's see what happens when we click on the different profiles. Okay, that's a bit too much. Let's make it a bit smaller. No, that's way too much. I could soften it, soften the edges. And just change the multiply so it's not so dark. I think something like that, something like that will do for now. And we'll click close on that. So this top surface here, um, soda cans usually have like a channel here for the drink to go down, um, like any excess liquid that comes out. So I'm just going to add that just by duplicating the top surface, Command J, and I'll click on the bottom one. And I'll just get rid of anything that's inside of there. And I'll just give it a dark color like that. So we can't see it at the moment, but if I just use the arrow keys a couple of times, you can see it. It can poke out from behind. And I'll make that a little bit bigger, something like that. Make it a little bit lighter as well. Okay, so it's kind of looking pretty good right now. These, these lines that I've got here, they are a bit distracting, so I am going to fix that. I'm just going to go on both of them, and I'm just going to change the color because we have the uh, embossed look already. So I'll just change it to something a bit lighter, something like that, just to hide them a little bit. Okay, so what's missing here? Well, usually the can wouldn't be this sharp where it would go up and it would just be, there'd be no edge to it, no rim. So let's just create that. So again, I'm going to click on top and we're going to duplicate this. And we're going to delete everything inside. So we're left with our basic shape again. I'll just make this black so we know what we're doing. And I'm going to duplicate that again. I'm just going to drag it inside a little bit like that. I'll make it lighter so you can see what I'm doing. So we've got about that, that kind of thickness here. This will be our rim. I'm going to cut this shape out of the shape underneath. I'm going to select both of them again and geometry tools like we did before. Click subtract and we have our rim. Let's color that in with the fill tool again. So click on fill tool and drag it out and start adding your colors. So our soda can is looking pretty good right now. Let's introduce that sleeve that we made earlier. So I'll just click on it here and let's make that a little bit bigger. I'll center that and drag out, snapping to the sides now. Okay, that's good. I'm just going to clip that inside of the main can shape. I'm going to drag it up slightly and I'm going to click on opacity and just bring that down a little bit so that we can get that metallic look because you know some soda cans it's kind of translucent and they have their marketing material on the side uh, alternatively you could always go through um, these options here but for now I'm just going to go for opacity and I'll just fix this this is the darkest point I, I'm not happy with that so I'm going to go ahead and there we go Let's tidy up everything we've created here. So click on all of it, command G to group it, and we call it soda can. So we have our soup can. 
and our soda can complete. Now that we have both of our objects complete, I'm going to stock them like I'm stocking a shop. So a bit of speed art's gonna come up. So first of all, I'm gonna drag this off to the side and I'm gonna change the color of this can first. So I'm gonna click on layer effects, color overlay, I'm gonna to go to blend mode and hue. I'm gonna change the color to something like a blue color, like that. Okay, with this selected, go up and just maybe somewhere like here, command J to duplicate that, and we'll just drag it out a little bit like something like that. And I'll press keep pressing command J because it's gonna power duplicate now. Okay, so we have a line of them. I'm gonna press command G to group. And from this point forward, I'm just gonna be using everything I've done before. And then at the end, I'm going to change the color of a few of them and uh, flip them around so they're not all facing the same way on the cans by using the transform tool and just clicking on flip horizontal. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you found that tutorial useful, and if you did, tap like and consider subscribing to see my future videos. Whilst you're here, why not check out some of my other tutorials, lots to see here. Thanks again and see you on the next one.